What are some of the biggest car dealer ripoffs that you may have exposed yourself to when shopping for your next used or new car in the last couple of years? With chip shortages meant that a lot of times there was shortages in brand new vehicles, low selection, and very low inventory. Used cars were also hard to find because new vehicles weren't available. And as a result, a lot of car dealers have found creative ways to making up those gaps. They've charged you for extras, all sorts of creative ways to rip the customers off. Well, let's take a look at this and let's see. Here's a Monroney telling us $107,000 for this, $107,000. Wow, like what can you say? And I wanna share five of those key tricks and tips and red flags that those dealers may have exposed. So hopefully you don't get ripped off on your next car deal. Hello, my savory seeds of sunshine. Let's take this from the top. Here's five of the biggest dealer scams and ripoffs. Have you ever been pickpocketed, maybe possibly walking through a very busy, crowded area, possibly Las Vegas Strip on New Year's Eve, and all of a sudden you looked and you checked and your pockets were empty and that immediate sense of panic because you literally lost everything. Your wallet had everything in it or your phone had all your personal information. That feeling of helplessness, that desire of, I need to get this back immediately. Yes, that keeps everybody in a state of panic and unfortunately, sometimes walking out of a car dealership after you sign the paperwork can you often leave you in a very same state of mind. And one of the biggest scams, ripoffs, or tactics that these dealers are trying to run by you and your friends or family or relatives literally are tide selling or adding extras and making you either believe that they're important and they're mandatory, as we saw a case here recently where Hyundai had actually provided an invoice with a whole pile of mandatory add-ons. Amazing deal. I know it looked like an amazing deal. To a young buyer and her father. These people actually quickly realize that that's not necessary. And you're right. Those features are not necessary. No dealer should be trying to pull a fast and quick one on you. And while tide selling is legal in Canada, in the United States, the FTC does frown on these business practices very, very aggressively. So you look and you look at this invoice, unfortunately, these folks had from Hyundai. We can give a quick walk down. They wanted to charge these people floor mats, not necessary. That's a whole extra you don't need to do. Go third party, much better and much more affordable. Mud guards, sure, they justified it with the fact that they live in a northern province, there's a lot of mud and slop on the roads and it protects the bodywork. There's no doubt that you can use that. But by adding it on by default, it doesn't even give you the option to shop around. You can always find better deals on places like Amazon, eBay, even go look at Canadian Tire or Pep Boys and you can find yourself a better, cheaper deal for that. They also wanted to add on nitrogen. Who charges for air? We breathe the air, the air is free. So a lot of buyers have been rooked with add-ons like the nitrogen, glass etching, key fob replacement or maintenance, floor mats, paint protection film, and a whole lot. Recently, I hosted a post from buyers who recently purchased their car in the last three years to understand if they too were rooked by extras or add-ons. And 82% of these people said, yes, in fact, there was all sorts of extras from glass etching, paint protection film, and as well, a whole host of other protective features. They even get rooked with other add-ons or extended warranties, which some people find value or not. That's not the point. But the unsuspecting buyer who sometimes just signs on the bottom line is not always thinking straight and often gets rooked with some of these extra add-ons. They're not necessary and if a dealer is telling you they're mandatory, be prepared to walk away because there's many other dealers just like that. The worst part is buying a base vehicle. You can find yourself finding an MSRP of one of these vehicles for twenty-five dollars or $30,000, but by the time they put on extra features like rim and wheel protection, key fob, mats, mud guards and all the extras, you could find yourself with an extra six or $7,000 tacked onto the price of a $30,000 vehicle. You're talking an extra 20% on top of that vehicle's value. That's absolutely ludicrous. And remember, you don't get any of that back when you sell the vehicle. So you're literally out thousands. How do you think people get into this negative equity situation? All these extras and add-ons, depreciation of that vehicle and all these extras and add-ons just vaporize into thin air and add zero value to the resale of that unit. A second little scam that you're finding a lot of these dealers trying to perform is a forced finance, so to speak, and that's an unfortunate situation. Some of these dealers were extremely bold. A few short years ago, you'd see it in the advertisements in newspapers online where they have cash price and then they actually have financing price. Cash price might say 35,995 and finance price might be 33,995. 
but then you have to take their in-house financing. The worst part is by the time you take the financing, you're probably gonna end up paying for that vehicle for that five year term and you might end up being into it for 43 or $44,000. And a good part of that money and that financing goes back to the dealership as kickbacks. Sometimes they even are allowed to put on an extra couple of percent with certain financing lending institutions, certain dealerships and certain markets, they're actually able to tack on a couple. They might actually, they might qualify you the buyer at say six and a half percent, but in fact the bank is willing to lend that four and a half percent and you take two percent for yourself in your pocket. And believe it or not, there's even dealers that don't even want to do business with you if in fact you want to buy cash. Remember the old adage, cash is king, because it gives you power. The worst part is sometimes it is hard to negotiate when you say you have cash, because as soon as you have cash and you tell the dealers that they're immediately put their back up and they know they only have one other lever to pull well two others one is the trade-in which we'll speak of later and the other one of course is the financing if you don't take the financing and you don't have a trade-in they have no more levers and they can't find extra capacity in there to earn a dollar so what you're having to do is not be actually coy with these dealers. Don't tell them right up front that you're buying cash and certainly don't tell them about a trade-in. At the end of the day, try to work out the best deal that you possibly can on the base price of that vehicle. Say, I'm still debating whether I wanna go financing in-house, lease, make them actually believe, possibly ask them, what's your rates? What kind of finance rates or lease rates do you have in-house? I'm kind of curious because I'm comparing it to my banks. So you kind of get them thinking about that and then you work on the price of the vehicle, get the best price, what you think is possibly fair and then hit them with that cash deal. Or the other option is if you find there's an open end to the back end of their financing and there is no penalty required for that financing, what you could actually do is take their financing for one month, get through it, pay a payment and then pay off the rest. If you have cash for that entire vehicle, make one cash payment or one finance payment and pay it off. As long as there's no penalties, you better check the fine print on that before you undertake that situation. But at the end of the day, don't be tied to their forced financing. And a third dealer ripoff that you might encounter, and this has personally happened to me. Many years ago, I was looking at this advertisement for this base little Mazda B2200. Many years ago, it was a regular cab, small rear wheel drive pickup truck, and it was a manual gearbox. Just what the doctor ordered. That's the exactly truck I wanted. And I remember they were advertising it for $9,995. And this was quite a few years ago. If any of you know, the old Mazda B2000 and B2200 are quite an old vehicle. They said, come on down. Yes, we have a green one out back. So unfortunately, this was in the next city over. It took me about an hour to get there. I get in my vehicle. I drive down there. I go in there and I ask the salesperson. Yeah, I just called in about, you said you had a green Mazda 2000 B2200 with a manual gearbox. Um, where is that? I came to see that because I'm very interested in buying it. Then all of a sudden, oh, um, they give you this kind of confused look. They say, well, let me check on that for you. Yes, I remember the conversation. So then they go talk to the manager. They make a bunch of noise, go to the bathroom, come back, destroy some time, come back and say, you know what? Unfortunately, well, since we talked last, there was a customer that overheard the conversation. They decided to go look at it and they put a deposit and it's off to the detail shop. So he can't even show you the vehicle. So sadly, but we have this other great unit over here and it's a 2200 with an automatic. It's got the, the X space cab and it's four by four, but we can sell you that truck for $22,935. It does have a few extras. It's got the upgraded wheel package and we throw in a canopy. So it's a great deal. It's a much nicer truck than that little base unit you were looking at. That in itself is bait and switch. And you see it all the time. Dealers with ads, they show desirable models. They show prices either down to the week. They show prices that are extremely aggressive, prices that almost seem too good to be true. Have you ever thought that? No, that's gotta be too good to be true. Because often it usually is. So they'll usually advertise something, they don't have it, it's grossly underpriced, or they'll just put some aggressive stipulations and some fine print that you don't see on the ad, and then you go on down there or you'll phone them and they'll say, oh, we just sold out, or those are on back order, or there's a million different reasons and they'll always try to get you into something else, usually for thousands of dollars more money. Typical bait and switch, illegal, scam artist. You see that, say, I'm out of here. That's the biggest red flag that you're dealing 
with a substandard, borderline criminal level of dealership. Another little trick that some of these dealers seem to pull. You get into the deal, you start negotiating, you found the deal, you like the price, you like the extras, you're ready to pull the trigger on this, you sit down, sign the paperwork, you're going through it, yeah, everything looks legit, and then you remember, wait a minute, I thought there was an ad that said something, or I thought early in the conversation, you say to the dealer, I thought you said that there was some $1,000 or $2,500 cash incentive or cash back if I buy this vehicle as a 2023. I thought you said that there was some cash back, but I don't see that on the invoice anywhere. Well, that's because sometimes there are incentives that may be coming to you and you may be due to use the consumer, but they don't necessarily offer up and they might be actually willing to hide those incentives or conveniently forget them. And sometimes you might be finding that this thousand or this $2,500 might in fact be coming your way. Contrary to that, a lot of these dealers sometimes are willing to just nullify it on the contract, make a note of it on the side and pocket that thousand or that $2,500 for themselves, put it in their pocket, walk away, extra money for them. Shady dealer practices, red flags, again, another sign that I'd really question the integrity of the dealership and really be willing to walk away. If you're not satisfied with cashbacks or rebates or incentives that were offered to you in advance and you're not getting them or there's a fight to get them, that's just a red flag. That's another big no-no. Take a hike. Another big scam, and I've spoke of this earlier in the video, and it's also one of those conversations that you want to have later on and don't openly admit it at first because that's one of your bargaining chips and that's your trade in value of a used vehicle. If you're looking at possibly trading in a vehicle, don't tell them up front because they will incorporate that and they know that they can give on one end if they take on the other one. So the last thing you want to do is talk about trade in. You definitely want to talk about the base price of their vehicle, work that out, then figure out whether you're talking about in-house financing or otherwise, and as well, then finalize with your trade-in vehicle. And you want to negotiate the best deal for your vehicle. Honestly, push come to shove, if you have time, you're always going to get better money for your vehicle if you sell it outside on the used car market. And of course, you can find out the value of your vehicles from sources like Carvana, CarMax, Auto Trader, pair a little bit to some classifieds. If you have a 2018 Honda Accord, I like to just generally look at Auto Trader and I do a search within 500 or 1000 kilometers for that year, similar mileage, and you get a pretty good sense of what the retail values are. Now you've got to know that dealers are not necessarily going to give you retail value for your car and you've got to anticipate a little bit of leeway there, but realistically at least you go in there knowing the value of your car or even try to sell it privately. If you know that it's an easy car to sell that way, there's certain vehicles that are. Definitely, I would suggest selling it privately. You get that cash in hand, and that's always worth more. Now, the dealers will always tell you, well, whatever your cash trade-in value is, that goes against the tax, like the GST, for example. So you'll save not just on the base price of the vehicle, but on some of the taxation, and they only tax the GST is applied to the remaining amount. So on certain markets, that does change in states, is a little bit different than in Canada, but at the end of the day, you wanna make sure that you get the best and the most valuable deal out of your vehicle. Don't bring that conversation up early because they always wanna try to get the most out of one of those ends. So if they know that you are sharpening your pencil and you are aggressive and you are a shark at getting the best deal on the base price of theirs, they're gonna to try to hose you to no man's land on the price of your trade-in. So don't let that happen. If you don't like the price that they're willing to give your trade-in, delay the inevitable, maybe go sell your car. If you have to delay gratification and wait a month or two to sell your vehicle, so be it. It might be an extra $2,000, $10,000 in your pocket. If you're willing to wait, it's always worth your time. So definitely make sure that you like the prices on both the trade-in value, that you like the prices on the value of the vehicle, the lease and finance rates, and the trade-in value that you're getting for your vehicle. So the FTC and many of these consumer rules are placed there for a reason, and it's to pre protect you, the consumer. There's enough scam artists out there, and there's a reason why dealerships warranted the name Steelerships. It's because there are too many scam artists out there. While there's many great dealers that operate with integrity, they care about your business, and they like repeat business because they want to do all things on up and up, 
Sadly, there's a lot of those corner lots, those greasy dealerships, and even some of the top level, top tier OEM manufactured dealerships that are doing the same thing. So realistically, you want to make sure that you don't want dealer add-ons, no bogus add-ons. You want to be very sharp, ask the questions, don't be shy, don't feel that you're being rude. Get to the point, ask every single point of question, understand what the out the door price is, because that should include all the add-ons, all the taxes, and make sure you read very extensively each particular line item that you're not overpaying somewhere because the many dealerships are in it for the business and if they've been around a long time they know the tricks they know the ins and the outs and that's why I'm here to really help and support your buying experience so that you don't get hosed ultimately it's bad enough with the cost of living the increased price of vehicles inflation taxation we all need somebody on our side right here I'm here to help you go out there get the best deal you can and watch out for those dealer ripoffs and with all of that said, be sure to check out right there. The big car market crash has begun. Here come some of the huge price drops. Check it out right there. You're going to love it. Hope to see each and every one in the next one. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.